So in one of our previous videos, we looked at how do we get the current salary of an employee? How do we do it? How do we get the most recent salary? And we tried to do it with group by, but we really didn't hit the mark. Now with group by, what we said is, Hey, if we join all of these tables and then we do from salaries as S, we can grab the maximum salary. And yes, this is indicative of if your salary is only progressing forward, your max salary should be your most recent salary. But then I pose the question, Hey, what if people move between departments and they have to take salary cuts or there's an economic recession and everyone is taking a salary cut because of that and that gets logged in the system? Well, then your max salary isn't necessarily your current salary. That wasn't really straightforward. The maximum salary isn't necessarily what you make right now. And so then we said, OK, what if I get the max from date? If I get the max from date, I'll know when they got their most recent salary, right? Well, yes, we know when your last salary was appointed, but we don't know what it was. And so the entire purpose of this video is how can we solve for this with window functions? How would we do that? How could we get the result through a window function? And so let's take a look at that. Over here, you can see the correct answer. And what you can see is we're doing a select distinct. And if we remember, distinct is going to get only the rows, only singular rows of that value. So we're selecting the distinct employee number. So we only want one value of employee number. Okay, so that makes sense. Then we get their first name and we get the department name that they're in. And then we're saying, OK, well, let's use last value. So if we use last value and we assume that we're going to grab the salary, then we're going to use a window function. And we're going to do it over. We're going to say, hey, partition by the employee number. So, OK, logically, we're now partitioning by the employee numbers. So we have groups of employee numbers. And then we say, all right, order it by the from date. So order that partition that we just had by the from date. But now we're in a weird spot because as we said, with last value and order by, we're only looking at anything that came before and the current row. So how are we going to make sure that we get the actual last value? Well, that's where framing came into play. So if we say, Hey, against this range, go between everything that came before and everything that comes after. And let's not follow what order by usually does. Then we can say, hey, get me my current salary because it's ordered by the from date. So I'm sure that when I order it that way, that the last from date's going to be at the bottom. And that makes a lot of sense. And if we do that and we say, hey, this is the last value, get me the last value, then we're going to be sure that we're getting the last salary. So let's run this query real quick. All right, so here we have a shortened version of that same query where we're doing the partition and the order and we're doing the range change. And so what we're going to see happen here is that for the employee, we are getting the last value. We are getting that value that correlates to their last salary date. And how do we know that for certain? Well, it's fairly easy. If we ran that same last value and we did it against from date instead of the salary, we can also see when that last from date was. And so then we can verify, hey, are we actually getting the last date? Are we actually getting that correct salary? And so let's check, because that's a good question. So for 10,001, we already knew that it was in 2002, 0622. So we can now accurately say that like, hey, this value actually maps correctly to this value. And all of these values are their most recent salary. 
So we've solved it in a way with window functions to give us a correct outcome. Is this the only way to solve it? No, there are many, many ways to solve the same question. And we'll be looking at different ways to solve this question. Is this the most performant way? Probably not because you're using window functions and you're applying these functions against the window again and again for every single row. So it may not be the most performant solution. I would argue that it isn't even the most readable solution because I don't like working with window functions personally because I find them harder to read, harder to understand when you're going through the motion of trying to kind of make out what's happening. But it is a way to solve this question. So we've now successfully found a way to answer the question, what is my current salary once and for all? And with that, we learned a lot about window functions. We learned a lot about how they operate and how these framing and order by and partition work together to get us an ability to answer real world questions. Now, if we were to look at this and visualize this in a way that made a little bit more sense, if we were to look at the salary table, well, then we're selecting the employee number here. So we're getting the employee numbers. And if we did last value against the salary, well, if you were to think about a window function, think about it this way. So we're selecting from salaries and we know we're getting this data back from salaries. So what we're basically doing inside the window function is we're saying, hey, get me that thing that I got from over here in salaries. And let's just do some stuff against that. So when we do last value salary, what we're basically saying is, hey, OK, OK. So now that I have that entire window of data, well, let's go and let's partition that by the employee number. So if I have a match against the employee number, create a partition form just group all of that data together, put that in a group. And then what we said is, hey, order it by the from date. So for each from date, we're ordering that group. So with each from date, there is an employee number linked, but we're ordering it by the order of the from dates. And so what we're saying here is when we order it, each of those from dates also has a salary column. So we have the salary column. So let's grab the last value of the group of that salary column. So all the way at the bottom, we're grabbing that value and that is the one we're returning here. And that is a high level visualization of what is actually occurring when we execute this query. Now, if the framing had changed, if we didn't do between everything before and after, if we didn't change that range, we might have messed this up. And so let's look at what would happen there. So here I went ahead and I removed the frame clause from both last values. And what that basically does is, you know, remember when we had this distinct here? Well, that's not really going to play well with this because none of these values are unique. Therefore, none of them are distinct. Well, each and every single one of them is in their own right distinct because they're unique in their own way. But because they're not the same, we're not filtering them out is what I'm trying to say. So because we have a different last value for the date of the acquirement of the salary and the salary, well, we now know that we are not getting duplicate rows. So distinct isn't going to filter them out. But even more so than that, because we changed the way that the range looks, we know that order by looks at everything that came before and the current row. And because the current row is always going to be the last row, we now know we actually didn't do anything here. We basically rendered the same exact thing as we would if we just put from date and salary, we were seeing the exact same values. Because if I remove these, and I do s dot from date and s dot salary. Well, what we're going to see happen here is we're going to see the exact same data come out. And the reason for that is because the last value is taking into account the current row and only up until the current row. 
we basically use the window function to render the exact same thing out. And that is exactly why our framing here is of the utmost importance so that we take into account the entire range. And that's why we were able to solve this with window functions. All right. So with all of that said, there are so many functions that you can use with window functions. And we've looked at a couple, but just so you know, you can use most of the aggregate functions, some min, max, average, but there are special ones. There's first value, returns the value evaluated against the first row in the partition. So the very first row. And then we saw last value, evaluates the returned value of the very last row in the partition. And then there's something called nth value. And with nth value, you can say, I want this row number in this partition. And if it's null, it's null. There is something called percent rank to return a relative ranking. There is rank to return the rank of the current row in the partition with gaps. There's something called row number. There's lag and lead. There's a lot of different window functions you can use. And we're going to look at the small subset of them that you would use most often. But just know that the majority of these are to be utilized when you're doing some kind of data analysis, predictive things, when you want to run some kind of calculations or whatnot against the window of data for each individual row. And so let's hop into looking into some of these functions.